Do you want to come rubbing shoulders with old Myers? Because, I mean, there have been many of us left and we'll be pretty smelly soon, right? You know? Soon? <laughs> no, I was, um, we're up here today filming with the kids. We've got, obviously... Uh, all those little bell maids. All those little bell maids, oh, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we gave them the costume and they write and tell their own stories. That they research about Cornish Tin Line and they, yeah. you know, they all live in St. Just or surrounding the old school of St. Just. Some of their great grannies might have been bell maidens. Indeed. In fact, yeah. uh, their teacher, Mr. Trinath, her granddad, Neville, he worked Neville. in Neville Trinath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his we pictures all, in the were, drawing. We were of the same sort of era, but mm. yeah. Yeah, so I've always found my granddad, well, I'm from Midland originally, so all my family were. Nobody's perfect. True. Oh, I knew that was coming. Yeah. So we're all clean. You've got me careful, though, because he is quick. I can tell you that now. He is very, very he quick. Is quick. He Not is quick. Not as quick as I used to be. <laughs> so when did. When did no, we, I've got your letter here yeah. to Mr. Pasco. You said, Dear Mr. Pasco, I shall be leaving school at the end of term this summer after taking the A-level examination and would like to take up employment at Giver. I would be grateful if you could let me know if you wish to see me for an interview. I, I have enclosed a stamped address envelope for your reply. And that was 9th of April 1974. So when did you... What happened next? Well, I got a reply and an interview. And... Um, here I am now. They have released me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then how long after that letter, in April 1974, did you start working? In July 1974, two oh, months later. Started, in July? Yeah, three months, two months, three months, yeah. Yeah, why? Really. And you still here? Yeah. How old were you when you started? How old you been? A boy then? minor, 19. 19. How old you know? 19. 19. Yeah. I am aged. Do you see? <coughs> That is lamb chops, keep it fresh. <laughs> <laughs> but you, oh, you remember Sherry Lewis, do you? <laughs> Sherry Lewis? Lamb chop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, where did you live? You said Just Boy or Batalla? Oh, or? no, no, I'm a Content Boy. Is that? Pirate. Amazing. What does is, what is Giva mean to you? And then? no, I haven't lived here all my life, but most of it. Most of it. What does what Giva mean to you? Well, it was good at the time. Um, a major, major shock. Uh, coming here as a schoolboy, you know, you think you're the bees knees and you, you know, you've done a bit of this and played a bit of rugby and this and that, and you think you can handle it. But being dumped into this is a man's world. It's no, pretty tough. No, 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 no. And after a bit of a while, um, they'll be giving you all these jobs which will break your heart underground. Mm. Uh, generally most people would be put underground with somebody or maybe not with somebody on a busy level somewhere and you'd be told to start there on the side of that level there and keep going until we tell you to stop. Mm. Digging leaks, drainage channels basically. Uh, so you'll be given a pick and a banjo which is a short handled shovel mm. with no strings and you can't play a tune on it. But and you maybe have a wagon if it's not a busy place but you might be with a mate and uh, basically you'll be digging drainage channels to, and they'll work out whether you've got any kind of aptitude or any kind of keenness to actually get stuck in and do some work because they'll be pretty smart they'll make a little mark without you noticing and they'll come back tomorrow and they see how far you've gone mm -hmm. If they sort of realise that you're actually um, going for it a bit, they might offer you a little job where you can actually make a bit of cash. Oh, that's that's nice. a little bonus. And or if, if one of the contractors is away, a trammer or something, they might put you with somebody to uh, have a day's work tramming or something and see how you make out, like, you know? Yeah. Go with, and there was all characters, like, you know? Yeah. Dick Any Williams and Dougie Rowe, people like that, Jack Rowe, those brothers, three brothers who were trammers here, Dougie Rowe, Jack Rowe and Kenny Rowe. And, uh, you know, it was it was a scream to be put working with them, like, you know? Yeah. You, know, you, you needed your wits a bit, especially with Dougie Rowe, who was completely unhinged and a total madman. Um, Do you think you've got to be a little madman to work underground? I think you've got to be a little bit of a 
A, B, and C. Right? <laughs> so, did you work with these pair of chaps here then? Back along or hey. alongside them, mate? Yeah, we we yeah, we've, Steve, we've yeah. been into a bit of mischief together. Certainly more so with with Grant. Um, Steve came along and was working in different part of the mine, and we our paths didn't cross. But you can be on different levels, and you you only see people in the dry beginning of the day and yeah. end of the day, and maybe. Depending on that, your path might not cross at all. If you're on upper levels, you're down early, up early, and deeper levels are, you know, you, your paths might not cross. So. I mean, I think for people that haven't worked underground, we don't really have a real clue what it's like. We think we might have an idea, but I reckon in reality we've got no clue. It's, it's like it everything is. I say to well, the own job. I mean, you could talk about your job, I wouldn't have any idea. And that's why... You've got a job, have you? Yeah. Where we, we do sort of talk each other's language or got respect for each other. I don't know what you want to put it. Yeah. And I think we'd all agree, for us, the one passion, or it's quite emotional, is the drumming. Yeah. I mean, out of all the places there, uh, you know, if I'm going to do a talk, I always choose a drive. Yeah. If I'm up the top and I've got to sweep out, it'll be the drive. There's yeah. a lot of ghosts in the dry, um, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I think the dry really drums at home. Just for anyone watching the number the dry is, can you tell us, tell us what the dry is, Peter? Well, basically, what the dry is where the miners went to um, get cleaned up yeah. and uh, put their old dirty clothes on to go underground. Mm -hmm. When they came up, showered, mm -hmm. clean clothes on, and uh, get dried off, hence the name, the dry. Yeah. Because um, mm. I mean, I've been up this afternoon and it, the atmosphere in there is just electric, isn't it? A lot of people say that, yes. Yeah, they do, yeah. Do you, do you, can you remember where your locker is? Yeah, up there? Five, yeah. Nine, 595. 595. <laughs> and you see? Yeah. Yeah. 636. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever just sit there and wonder where the time's gone and the history's gone? And I do. Sometimes I, uh, I must admit, I sort of like almost close my eyes and think, I can remember all the shouting the di and the camaraderie and the different yeah. kind of sky and, and the, the sky larking and fooling around up there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we were a tight unit. I, I would imagine you were a tight unit because you were doing a really dangerous job. I mean, that's got to have an impact on your relationship. Well, with your I wouldn't say that. I think just some some of them done done that job and did it dangerously. <laughs> right. But is the job not dangerous? Yeah. yeah. Everything, <laughs> everything it down there is heavy and it bites. <laughs> it was a good camaraderie underground. It was, it was very good. Everybody had everybody's back. Yeah. You, you, as Mo just said, you could work three or four years in this mine and work with everybody. Mm. Then all of a sudden one day you're put with somebody who you've never even spoken to. Yeah. They've worked underground longer than you, perhaps. Yeah. You know, but you've never worked with them. It just so happened that they're in one side of the mine all the time yeah. or up on different levels or whatever. You know. So eventually you do get to meet everybody. It was a good place to sort sort yourself out and you you'd find out what your own capabilities were. Mm. And you'd be stretched. You'd be put somewhere with somebody, they'll try you out and it's taken a bit of a chance, perhaps. Say, well, we've got that boy there, we'll take him with you. Well, all right, then, yeah. and off you go. And you just follow him, and you sort of don't really know what to expect. And so you might be put on a loco, and you're shunting wagons while he's driving them up or mucking the yesterday's blast out. Mm. And he'll ask you a pretty straight question. Now, we're going to drill over now, or I am. You can drill as well if you think you're up to it. So, mm. Two experienced miners who drill at least an eight foot round in a tunnel. Uh, or developers, I said, because that's what they do, develop the mine. Yeah. And um, they'd say, well, do you fancy your chances? Do you think you can do it? And you'd have to make a quick decision. And if you stuck your neck out and said, yeah, I think I can do that, you mustn't let him down because he's committed now to drill an eight foot round. And mm. if you fail on what you're doing, He's not going to make it for blasting time that day, so he's not going to be too pleased with you. So you've got to step up several gears and try it, and um, you've got to make sure you succeed, otherwise you're likely to be <coughs> down the ratings quite a lot, and mm. might have a bit of a thick ear as well. Really? Oh, it's a very much a man's world. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, so, but if you made the grade, you'd be happy. And come the end of the month, a lot of them were pretty decent, and they might bung you a tenner because you know you definitely earned it that day. Mm. Um, another time, if he was short of his mate or something, you, he might actually ask for you. He'd say, "Oh, that boy, you sent one me before." But now you're definitely on the way somewhere. Yeah, it was either up or out or underground. Yeah, and um, I remember Russell Pascoe said to me. It'll make a man of you, and you won't be able to handle it. <coughs> Best thing you ever done. Yeah. And if I could turn back the clocks, yes, I would have done it all over again. Really? Because I would never have met friends. Um, and uh, I start, I was labouring underground, like everyone does, and then I got on the timbering. I've done that for a few years, so I was actually underground age of Sunday. And um, I've done a lot of timbering for Martin. Martin's dead at drilling. Mm. And, um, they sent me and Stoke then working with uh, Royal Dick Leg. Yes, he's working with Dick Leg, that's Sadly, right. Sadly, no longer Done quite with a bit us. of work doing that. And uh, then eventually, I waited my turn, I uh, managed to get on to drilling, developing. Mm. Um, but I used quite a few machines because the ground where I was to, no, most people in the timbering, they cut what they call hitches to put the wood or the steel in. Mm. But the ground, wasn't very good, it was pretty atrocious out in the hanging wall vein and uh, I had to do what they call pinholes so we had to drill lots of holes and then you drop these irons down to actually put the girders in or woods. Um, but yeah and then I got on to drilling, developing and um, that really was something else I must admit. Mm. Um, and I don't mind admitting it, I never thought I was going to master it. Really? Mm. You pull your arms off the big ones on the 900s. And that is literally all in the grain. Well, it's got it. a hydraulic air leg, but yeah. we had the big ones, which are the 900s, and they're the fast ones. Um, you can't get the 303s, um, but the 900s are the real big ones. And we were in softest ground out there, and, which means you've got to hold the machine back because the machine would go too fast. Really? And holding that back and pull your arms off. And that's what you did? Yeah, done that, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it and I remember when Steve came on the ground, I was timbering and Steve came to work with me, didn't you Steve? Yeah. You remember when we just started? Yeah. And, um, because everyone starts off labouring, mm -hmm. so I was timbering, so Steve was giving me a hand, assisting me, well probably, it might have been Martin Stoke as well, I don't know, but uh, we were doing work, I can't remember the levels now, Steve, can you? All over the place. Yeah, we was, yeah, I mean, most well, of the time. But we especially like the money as well, we make, mm. we make good money. Well, that's what it was all about. <coughs> yeah, money. I think like, you know, you hear about mining and mining, there's always like a little bit of a myth that the place to make the money was on the drills. Well, Is that in general true? it was. In general, yeah. Yeah. drilling was, yeah. that was the ultimate. If you, you were just paid more than everyone else. You were paid on the distance of ground you broke. Right. Whether it was like the guys I really, really take my hat off to are the old guys. How they could work in some of the conditions that they worked in with the equipment they had then. Mm -hmm. They were really, I mean, a lot of people say they were, but they was really smart men. They was to work in those conditions. This is like, what era would you say this is? Or? This is back when it's like sort of, um, basically boys as young as seven would have been working, working the candles. That's sort of, you see, you're talking about 18th and... century, something yeah. like that, mid 18th century. Um, and that was quite often broken that I working on this, but you might have minded. I certainly did. And, uh, to but go you, in, you see it in, in, in the structure of the tunnels and some yeah, of the drill the, marks. You know, how much safer was it between someone mining in the 1800s? Well, they could only see what they could, with their candles. Right, so it was light. So, yeah, that's it. That, that was their only light. Whereas we had the electric lights off the batteries, and I think they weighed six pounds, which is what, two kilos? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I felt the weight of them now. I thought, God, they're never yeah. that heavy. But aside from the light and how far you could see, mm. how, was was the difference in how dangerous it was? Well, you could or? see. I mean, the beat. Oh, <laughs> they get 30, 40 foot somewhere out the beams. Oh. On the, it's funny you say you, about light. I mean, the thing is, a lot see. of times, if, if, if you could see <coughs> the danger, probably we wouldn't have done no. half the things we did do. Yeah. I mean, you quite happily step across a hole, an open hole that might be four or five hundred foot deep, and think yeah. nothing of it. Wouldn't yeah. bat an eyelid. Well, you're like, you're going to pick. You the imagine being like, like, you know, five hundred foot up in the air above the ground. But, a whole different thing. Mm. But your light would pick out 
background if it was yeah, hanging down. Anything was perched up there. And they were really dodgy. robust, yeah. they had to be. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, you, sorry, go on. I was yeah. thinking about the light. <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's parts of Gibro now where you can go and have a look around. Yeah. And I'm there for like 20 minutes. I'm like, you yeah. come out the door and you're like, thank goodness to get a bit of sunlight. Yeah. Do you ever go, would you ever go underground? You were just like, I don't want to do this today. Uh, they used to shut uh, in the summer for a fortnight. The in the summer. Mm. And um, then they would do maintenance on the mill. All the mill would stop and they would replace all what's got to be done. And the shaft machinery maintenance. And shaft maintenance. So the miners had a fortnight off. Mm. By the second week, this is in the summer, your eyes have got pretty accustomed to the light. Mm. When you go back underground, you're tapping your light, you're thinking this damn thing isn't bright enough. Really? It is. It's just get, you've got to get used to it again. Mm. So, but it's like I always say, when it's dark underground, you can touch your nose, you cannot see a finger without the light. Yeah. You touch your nose up on the surface when it's dark and you can see a finger without yeah. the light. That's how dark it is when you're underground. It is pitch dark. It's black. Yeah. You're solely dependent on that light. Your light depends on it. You're in zero. Yeah. Mm. Because there's no light penetration whatsoever, anyhow. Yeah. No. I mean, people think we often get asked, "Is you know, it must be lit everywhere you go?" No, it's not. It's lit on the stations. That's where you step out when you drop down to whatever level you're going on. And they are mediocrely sort of lit up. You get some stations are lit up better than others. Mm. Some just have. But as soon as you exit from the from the station, you're thrown right into darkness, and it's down to you and your lamp, or you and your partner. <coughs> you know, um, fifteen level, for example, which was quite a busy level. Um, that was well lit. But again, once you move away from the station, sorry, once you move away from the station, mm. um, you know, yeah, it's, it's everything you know, back to normal and dark. Like yeah but you couldn't you know you imagine what our electricity bill would have been yeah if you tried to light every tunnel up uh, and it wouldn't be practical anyhow because you'd be damaging lights left right and center but mm. uh, you imagine our electricity bill you know it was bad enough back in those days what was it 23 or 32 thousand yeah, pounds it's about twenty five thousand pound a month i think mm. uh, when was that that was, that was, in the was 80s. It late 70s early 80s yeah, yeah. For the machinery, because you had the heavy machinery yeah. in there. Yeah, that's the big one. I dread to think what it would be now. Supply <laughs> pylon coming in. Yeah, yeah. Pretty unbelievable now, isn't it? This yeah. is a modern lamp, but the bill for it. Yeah. They're better because they're LED is, ones. Uh, I always want an LED. No. That clips on the helmet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lug around your battery pack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were the old ones were twice that size. Yeah, have got a belt here. They're basically a lead acid battery, so they're pretty chunky. Yeah. Carrying around about four or five pounds of lead if, plates in if the you was battery. On your own and that, that went. Yeah. What did you do then? You are in deep trouble. You're stuck. Yeah. If you're on your own. And occasionally you're supposed to always be too, mm. but occasionally it did happen that you wasn't yeah, working. Happened on your to own. me once on your own. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you were stuck on your own in the dark. I, I as Mo just said, once they get downwind that um you know, you're doing the job, you're a sensible underground because the management will, believe it or not, you don't think everybody, but they are taking notice of you. They are taking notice of what you're doing there. Like if I work with Grant for the day, when they come up, management will say, hey, I was the boy today, blah, blah, blah. They might just only say, yeah, he was all right, he's doing all right. I always praised you upstairs. I always praised me upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> if he paid you the right way. And you'd be family, and, and you'd be family. And, yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I, I came in to go underground one day and they said to me, as a day's pay man, which is, as you've just been explained, is the underground labourer, mm. I came in and we used to wait there in the dry by where all the shift bosses are. You would stand there and wait for them to call you over and they would say, well, you're on my level there, you're doing so and so and so and so, off you go. And uh, I went to stand there and I got called over a shift boss and he said, right, Stephen, you're on, I don't know what it was, 15 level or something, I don't know. Um, you're doing a bit of maintenance, clearing a tunnel and you're on your own. Like, most of your digging leads or clearing out all bits of timber, having a bit of a clean up, like, and you're on your own. And generally, what they say to you is every whip and a flip, just pop out from where you are out onto the main tramming level and just let the trammers know you're all right, or they'll pop in and see you, just make sure you're right. So, got nothing to worry about, it's just okay, well, off I went. Well, it so happens that by pure coincidence, a week before that, I was speaking to an old miner. I can't remember who it was, and he said to me, 
For every lamp goes out on the ground boy, one thing that you can do is to bend down and feel for the track. And if you know which way is in and which way is out, which you should do, if you know you've got the face right next to you and your lamp goes out, you just got to turn around. That's going out is to reach down and crouch down, feel for the track and follow the track out. And you remember you've got box holes now, it may be along that way, so you don't go banging your head. Well, on this particular day, the actual ruling or safety training you get is if your lamp goes out and you're on your own, is to sit down and wait to be rescued. That's what they generally tell you to do. Don't go wandering because, as Mo just said, you don't know if you've got box holes all open there and what all sorts of bars sticking out. Bars and all sorts of nasties who you would so, um, cut yourself to pieces. Mm, on, really the, on this particular day, my lamp went out and I knew the tramways were down the end of this tunnel. And I thought, if I just get to the end of the tunnel, I right. get their attention, I'll be alright. Whip me, whip me back to the station, get a new lamp, sit down, and I'll be off. So I bent down and I felt for the track, and I knew it was out that way because right behind me was the face, so I couldn't go no further. No. And I'm feeling it, I've seen what I was going on for hours in just pitch black. And I thought, God, they're tunneled in this long, and I'm creeping along slowly. And eventually, I seen a very dim light at the bottom, and I thought, Oh, the tramways have just gone by. And I just, I could just faintly cool. hear them gone by. So I said, right, they've gone inside, they'll be out in a minute, so by the time I get to the tunnel, the way it's taking me at the moment, they'll probably be on their way out. And I crept down, and it, and it seemed like it was going on for an eternity, and I thought, for God's sake, be here in the end. And I got there, and I just seen the tram was coming back, and the light came on. No. Yeah, the light came on, yeah, it was like a faulty light. 